giving our praises to God, our Father, to His Son, who is our Savior, Jesus Christ, and to the Holy Spirit, the one that we need to lead and guide us in these days that we are not living in, uh, to all that are present on tonight, to our listeners, uh, we just thank God for another opportunity to assemble ourselves at the House of Worship to further study from His Holy Word. We want to thank our deacon for a strong devotion service. Get us ready to study from God's holy and God's righteous word. And our lesson tonight is rebellion of the people. Uh, and to this rebellion of the of the people meant that they was resisting what the will of God was for them. They were in defiance of what God was doing with them to, to rebel. And we know that uh, on our lesson on tonight, it's picking up from last week's lesson. Uh, last week's lesson, we were in the 13th chapter which came to an end in verse 32 and 33. Uh, and it's picking up this week on the 14th chapter. And I had to make sure that I stayed off of this lesson on last week. Uh, and then I gotta make sure that I stay off of next week's lesson on this week. It's hard to do it, it's hard to jump over there, and I'm gonna have to go over there for just, if you would allow me just a little taste later on in the lesson. But let's remember the, what caused this rebellion of the people was the report mm -hmm. of the 10 spies mm -hmm. uh, that, they, that they received. Uh, and I think in last week's lesson, we only had one of the, ten, uh, we know that there was 12. And I think only Caleb uh, spoke up in last week's lesson. And I did slip over into this week's lesson on last week uh, to hear from Joshua. Now, our lesson to those that are online, our, our lesson is Numbers 14, chapter 1 through 12. And again, it's picking up from last week's lesson. And let's see how it started off. And all the congregation lifted up their voice and cried, and the people wept that night. Notice the word I, got, I have highlighted uh, in my scripture is all of the congregation. Mm -hmm. uh, they had two reports, mm -hmm. but they accepted the evil report. And the good report lined it up with what God had told them that was in the land. Mm -hmm. And not only that, they brought proof back by one cluster of grapes that had to be carried by two men. Now they got this report. Now let's keep in mind how many people there were. Mm -hmm. Around about two million people. So the lesson said all. Oh, so this. They couldn't sleep that night. All the congregation lifted up their voices. And remember, they had a representative from every tribe. And let me tell you something. This is what should have happened, but it didn't. Uh, that representative, the head of the tribe, should have taken control of this. Uh, people in leadership have to stand up. And this is why I come, when I took over this church, one thing I asked everybody that's in a leadership position to come to Bible study. And I wasn't just asking that. I wasn't trying to be picking on nobody. Because if you're going to be an effective leader, you've got to know this Bible. Mm -hmm. If you've got to be effective, you've got to know mm -hmm. what to do when something like this happens. It said all of the congregation. You remember, God told them, I want you to get the head of every tribe. And you choose somebody to send over there. And they, the head of these tribes should have had enough knowledge 
about who God is. Mm -hmm. And not only that, but they should have known where God had brought them from and all God had did for them. But if the, all of them, that meant that the head was doing just like the people. Cried and wept that night. And what should have been happening at this time, it should have been the opposite. Because they are at, what is it, uh, Carnet Barnett? Carnet Barnett. Carnet Barnett. Now, do y'all know they was actually standing there where they could have crossed over? A time that they should have been rejoicing, mm -hmm. but yet they are crying. Two reports, and they took the wrong report. And here they are, all of the congregation, because of the report of the ten people. And then in the report, they talked about how strong the people were. They talked about the cities was all walled. And then they exaggerated on the annex because they said that they are, we are nothing but compared to them as grasshoppers. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, we know that that original tribe of the annex was destroyed in the flood. It, now, there are scripture that identify these people, but these people were not the size compared to the Israelites, like no grasshopper and no giant. Because if, you know what will happen if a grasshopper comes in here? And this is, they exaggerated the report. And that's one thing, people will exaggerate something instead of believing the true report. In verse two, and all, here we go again, all the children of Israel mumbered against Moses and against Aaron. And the whole congregation said unto them, would God that we had died in the land of Egypt? Or would God we had died in the wilderness? Now here they are, mumbering. It's going back to the complaining again. Uh, and it said some of them. Thank you. Y'all won't let me get away with that? It didn't say nothing about no some of them. It said all of them. Mumbled against Moses. Mumbled against Aaron. The whole congregation. And said unto them. Would God that we had died in the land of Egypt. Or would God we had died in the wilderness? Now let me ask, let me share this with you. Now they asked the question: Would we better been better off dying in Egypt? Well, they they was there for four hundred years, so they were dying in Egypt anyway. Uh, and another thing. They're talking about going back where well, they're not. Right now, they're just talking about uh, with God that we had died in the land of Egypt or with God that we had died in the wilderness. See, now, it's one thing that we're going to find out. God could never get the Egypt out of these people. And we have to be careful that God can never get the world out of us. But he never could get the world, I mean, Egypt, out of these people. He, he could not do that. And they're going to, we're going to find out in this lesson, they're going to, uh, 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 they're going to be responsible for their own death sentence. And it, and, uh, and, and it, Nick Berry said, and wherefore had the Lord brought us into this land to fall by the sword that our wives and our children should be praying? Were it not better 
for us to return unto Egypt, so right here, into Egypt. Mm -hmm. He couldn't get the Egypt out of them, and here they are talking about, in other words, we'd be better off in Egypt. Now, they said something in here that our wives and our children should be prayed out there. Something happened when Moses was a baby. Do anybody know what it was? The Egyptian king, did you ready? All the men's children Two years and under. Right. Now here they are. We need to see this picture, my brother and my sister. Because they were complaining. Now, they was on their way to the promised land. These lessons are designed of us are that the scripture of in 1 Corinthians, I believe it's in chapter 5, tells us that these lessons are an example to the church. The lesson that we're studying, they are an example to the church. And one thing we have to be careful about is murmuring and moaning and complaining. And it might not, we might not think it's in, uh, at the same nature as this, but complaining to God is complaining. Murmuring to God is murmuring. And one thing we ought to know, if God brought us out of that world that we were once in, and we see how many people are still out there in that world, that we part of God's royal family. That's what we need to always be thankful about. Yes, sir. And this is what we always ought to be able to praise God and thank God for. That he thought enough about me. He didn't have to have me. Because I tell you all the time, Deacon uh, Newman, there was some that I was hanging out with was better by nature than I am by practice. And just so happened he made a choice out of me, and I'm thankful for that. And that's why I love Sundays, a time when you can come and worship him by, Lord, I thank you. You know. Uh, so, so here they are talking about their wives. They didn't realize what happened when they were killing the, the, the children two years and under. So they talked about going back with all of this stuff was going on with them while they was down there. They was not, did not think about how they were nothing but slaves, had no say in what they were doing, and if we didn't make enough bricks, you know what they were going to do. Put that whip on their back. Now, since they've been out here, have anybody whipped their back? Since they've been out of here, have, any, have they went one day without no food? Have they went one day without any water? Have they went one day without any water? Ruling over them? Yes. And they went one day without anyone killing their children like they were doing back in Egypt. Mm -hmm. And Moses got in trouble defending one that was being beat by an Egyptian. And they had like everything was so right. So when we get ready to talk about going to that world, we better be careful. Now these lessons are designed for us. And if we think they're not, somebody run over to Acts 14 and 22 real quickly. That our wives and our children should be of prey. Lord have mercy. Taking the midwives' ch children, uh, taking them women children when they were being born away from them. That's what he told them. That's what Pharaoh told the midwives. Exactly. Get rid of the uh, 14 and 42. Yeah. Confirming the soul of the disciples and exhorting them to That's continue it. in faith that we must, though much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of God. He's talking about to anyone that's going to be made a disciple, according to what he read. We're going to go through some tribulation. We're going to have to go through these things to enter into the kingdom of God. Right. The first thing Jesus told the apostle Paul when his name was Saul, 
I'm going to show you the thing you must do what? Suffer. suffer for me. And if Jesus had to suffer, my brother and my sister, we're going to have to suffer. Now, what we don't realize, we're headed in a direction where we're going to get called out even more if we're going to stand up for right. If you stand up, you're going to get called. Because the world now is choosing wrong over right. And if we're going to stand up for right, we're going to be rejected by the world. That's why Jesus was rejected. He come because the world was wrong side up. And he turned it right back up and he was rejected. Nobody wants to hear you tell them about their wrong living. And you can't live any type of way and please God. And every man that's born of a woman, this is not no one home. Pilgrims sojourning. They were sojourning to their promise. We are sojourning, what? To our real home. And you're going to be surprised how many are not going to make it. And they're going through their wide gate and broad is the way. And according to Jesus, you're going to find many traveling that route. But there's another one where narrow is the gate. Every now and then. These things are true, my brother and my sister. And we're living in that time now. And people are going to start ridiculing us now by being a Christian, talking about we brainwashed. And another thing, a lot of people say they don't want to have nothing to do with the church because the preacher getting all their money. That's not true. Politicians get all your money and not complain about them. They get millions and millions of dollars. So, you know, uh, and, and that's what we, we need to be solid when people come to us. We're not trying to embarrass nobody, but we need to be able to tell them the truth. And like I'm telling you, if somebody complain about people on the, in the church on payroll, ask them are they concerned about those politicians that's on payroll. And they get their money. And then when people talk about people in the church giving their money, now you know what Jesus said about giving your money. What did he say? You give uh, Caesar, Caesar yeah. what belongs to Caesar. And then what else did he say? You give God what belongs to God. And everybody in here, I don't care nothing about telling no, you don't go down to the eternal revenue service telling them, look, man, I'm on a fixed income. Now, when it comes to God, we'll bring that mess up. Yeah. Not knowing that if I get God what I'm supposed to give him, according to what God said, it's just like these people. They didn't hear what God was saying. God said, if you give me mine, I'll do what? Open up the windows of heaven and pull you out blessing you can't receive. And don't you think that the money that we give to the internal revenue service, go to some other countries. Because we were riding on a bus, uh, my wife and I, when we was over in Greece, and I'm keep looking over here on the side. In America, you have rails to protect a vehicle from running over those cliffs. Over there, they don't have it. A lot of places at night, there's no lighting. Why do we have lighting? Because we pay our taxes. A lot of buildings you go to, especially Americans, <laughs> It ain't so bad on those people over there because they're not overweight. And their bodies are more healthy than our body. When you get going upstairs, they don't have that, uh, what do you call it? Escalate. 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 Elevate. Elevated and escalate. Mm -hmm. You have to walk up those stairs. Mm -hmm. And when you get to those airports, they don't have no that thing you... <laughs> no, you walk. Because we have the convenience over here because we pay taxes. So we're getting our money worth in, in this great nation of America. And I was saying over there, one that bus driver, man, you're getting a little bit close. I'm on the, on the window. <laughs> and you're looking down now, you know. And people do run off the side. Like I was saying, they don't have lighting. A lot of places not lit up at night. Because they don't pay taxes. But the main thing, uh, what God said, give unto Caesar what belongs to Caesar. And he's also telling us, you give unto God what belongs to God. But then again, we'll have those talking about I'm on a fixed income. 
But Ted didn't turn the revenue service and see what's going to happen. And now that was Jesus said that. You treat God just like you treat the internal revenue service. And the difference between them and God, they get theirs before you get yours. Now you can, you can go to your uh, uh, good employment office and tell them, no, don't take my taxes out. You, you, you can get it. You can get all your money. But when January comes and they, and they money do, you better have it. And, and, and I'm, I'm saying all this because people is going to tell us this. People say you're crazy giving your money to the church. And they would give their money. You know, Deacon Newman, when I got saved, Speck stopped getting my money. Speck stopped getting my money. And Deacon West, when I used to be riding, and pull up at a gas station, and they got that bill over there on the eyes. They stopped getting my money when I got saved. It, 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 I could just go there, I'm going there to buy gas. And that was before they had the debit card when you pay at the pump, when you had to go on the inside. And I wasn't walking in there, I wasn't going in there to buy no beer. But when you walk over there and you see it all eyes down in the summertime. Good cold. Good cold. Got eyes all over. You grab you more. But when you come to God, he take all that unnecessary spending out. Right. And not only that, that stuff is destroying your health. So we have to be careful, but we find ourselves in the same position of these people, but we complain about the wrong thing. And here they are, where we're not better for us to return to Egypt. For what? What were you going back to? Your old ways, the way those people were treating you while you were down there? And keep in mind what that scripture that Deacon Gibbard just read. And this was the Apostle Paul was telling them, now look, when you become a, a disciple, you're gonna go through tribulation. And a lot of the tribulation that we go through, God is testing us to make us stronger. Mm -hmm. Anybody in here play sports? Anybody in here ran track? When you first start running track, and that coach gets you after he run you, about the first week, you go home, you can't even sit down. Because your muscles are so sore. But he run you because he's strengthening you. And God does stuff to, us to test us. And the more weight you pick up, the more stronger you get. So a lot of times God tests us. What did Jesus do? The first thing Jesus did after he said, Tell them this is the day that the Lord had appointed me to preach the gospel, right after Jesus made that statement, but this is the, the day that the Lord had uh, uh, called him to preach the gospel. The next thing he did was what? Go be test tempted in the wilderness by Satan. And if Jesus was tempted, we're going to be tempted. Because this is who we are up against, the tempter. Now, whether we know it or not, we're not talking about a lot of this. Who is behind these people acting the way they act? The devil. Say, it, say it again. The devil. the devil. Out of all the good that God is doing, for them, they don't see none of the good that God. But every opportunity to complain, they take it full advantage. Not some of them. All of them. And verse 4, and they said one to the other. Let us make a captain and let us return to unto you. I've got this whole number four in my Bible, in my Sunday school book, highlighted. Why did you have it highlighted? Because this is the worst of their rebellion to make this remark that they made here in verse four. And they said one to another, let us make a captain and let us return to Egypt. This is the worst of all of their rebellion 
because they are not rejecting Moses. They are rejecting God who placed Moses to lead these people. They are rejecting the one, the choice that God made for them. And we have to be careful sometimes when we go to rejecting people. Because if God placed somebody at a place, and that person being rejected, it's not the person that's getting rejected. You telling God, you don't know what you're doing, God. Mm -hmm. sure. To reject that person is to reject, and that's what they're doing here. God chose Moses to lead them, and they should have known that. With all those plagues that was going on down there in Egypt. Mm -hmm. Moses was leading them all the time. And this plan that Moses is leading them, this is God's plan. And God sent his son Jesus with a plan of salvation. Uh, yes. I haven't checked this out. I do have one. It, was it any way possible that they could get back to Egypt? I mean, they came to, was it a way to get around the Red Sea or some kind of way? Or it, it's, po it's possible that it was a way to get around the Red Sea oh. because God sent them to, he, you remember, Pharaoh and them thought that they had got lost yeah. because he made a turn. Now, God wanted them to go to the Red Sea because that's still talked about today. Yes, sir. Because when, they, when he opened up the Red Sea, God was doing that, that all of the rest of the nation back at that time that had so much respect for Pharaoh and how powerful he was, God sent them that route mm -hmm. to open up the Red Sea to, that people would have the same mindset that Rahab had. I know what your God did at the Red Sea. Okay. Yeah, it was a possibility that they had another route that they could have gotten back. Now, since you went there, I think I was going to talk about that a little bit. I'll get with you. But what were they going to go back to? An angry Pharaoh? Thank you. Is that what you hit your hand up for? I'll have my hand up. It was a, a six day journey to mm -hmm. where they were going. If they went the right way. But think about what you got to realize is that God led them. Yeah. They didn't know where they were going. No. They were led by God. Mm -hmm. And the only way they get back is God took them back. Yeah. Because they were lost. And Without God, they were lost. You yeah. remember, God was their guy. Yeah. All, everywhere they went, he was their guy. Fill up a, cl a cloud by day, fill up fire by night. Uh -huh. He guided them. Yeah, I was just saying that because I got this map and stuff. I hadn't really looked at it. Yeah. But I had thought about it. Yeah, yeah. But was it a possibility? Possible way, yeah. Yeah, that was way. Get back to you, right? You know yeah, yeah. That, that was the way, but they wouldn't know. No, Deacon Press. No, I'm gonna tell them it was a six-day journey, but because of that stiffness, they're not going to work right through. That's why I turned into four years. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. And a, and another thing, now you have to also realize that the land was inhabited yeah. by other people. Yeah. And other people wasn't going to let you just come through their land. Yeah. Not no two million people. Go crawl through their land. They, didn't have to fight. they were gonna have to do some fighting because or and that other when they crossed over the Red Sea, there was two kings over there. That's right. That God wiped them out. Rahab talked about those two kings. Oh, she so who was gonna lead them? Yeah, that's the same and they didn't give us that. Was they gonna have God over them by day and <coughs> fire by night? And God was gonna protect them from anyone that was gonna attack. They wasn't gonna like. No, two million people to crawl through their yeah. So these people have they have just the devil is just having his way with them. And let me tell you something: he's having his way with the world now. He's having his way with the world right now. Same thing going on right now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But that was a good question. I think I may have, we're going to talk about that a little bit later on because that's something that needs to come up. But they would not have to just take that route back through the Red Sea. Because if that was the case, who was going to open the Red Sea up for? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
but but the thing that was going to get them in trouble, they was going to make themselves a captain. Mm. You remember I preached a sermon two weeks ago about the stone? Yeah. Well, they was going to make Jesus a king. Yeah. That's why Jesus had to get those disciples out of there. When he fed the 5,000, when they were sitting down eating, they, they were talking about, they had a conversation about making Jesus the king. And, and, and Jesus knew that. So he hurried up and got his disciples out there. Y'all get on a ship and go to the other side because they was buying into that. You know? And that's why when we as disciples, we got to know what we are. We, these lessons that Deacon Webb said, they just, we can't just get these lessons and just get them and let them fall on deaf ears. We need to take these lessons and, and, and let the Holy Spirit help us with these. Because when they were talking about making Jesus a king, right? First of all, it wasn't time. And what would the Roman government have done if they were going to make Jesus a king? Right. He was getting ready to get them wiped out. And Jesus knew it wasn't, no, it wasn't time for this. And I didn't come to be. I'm already a king. But it's not the type of king they want. They want to earth the king. But Jesus is king of king and lord of law. They already had him as a king. You see, and this is what gets us in trouble. When people want to do it their way. And that's why God said, my way and your way is not the same way. And all the time God was leading these people, day and night, visibly leading these people. Because I'm going to bring something out a little bit later on in the lesson. Uh, then Moses and Aaron fell on their faces before the assembly of the congregation of the children of Israel. Uh, in that verse 5, uh, now, why did they fall? They didn't, the scripture did not say that they fell on their faces praying. Scripture did not say that. Even though it was a time uh, that prayer needed to win up. But it did not say that. Uh, 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 this is what I'm going to share with y'all. Moses and Aaron was witnessing a full blown out unbelief, a full blown out act of showing no faith in God. And when they saw God's people acting like this in the presence of God, they fell down on their faces in shame and disbelief. And the fact that we're going to, when they talking about overthrowing Moses and overthrowing Aaron, they talking about overthrowing God. That's what they were talking about. And then going to make us a captain. God made this man a captain. When he told God, I can't go down there and lead these people. Who do I tell them that I am? You tell them just that, that I am, that I am. And then when he told God, I don't want to go down there because of my speak, Aaron don't go and speak for you. These are the people that God appointed. And they're going to make a king, make a captain. And let me tell you something. Uh, churches had to be, better be careful if God gave a church a pastor, right? And they talk about firing a pastor. Or talking about voting a pastor out. Now there comes some time when yes, if they, if what they're doing, if, if, if they're worthy to be fired, if they're worthy uh, 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 to be voted out, I'm not saying that you can't do this, but but I tell you one thing, you better make sure that you know what you're doing, because before we leave them, we're gonna find out what happened to these people. If God placed somebody there, my brother, my sister, it's not easy. Forgive me, I know I'm going to cut this off. But it's not easy leading God's people. No. And I say it's not easy leading God's people. That's not necessarily all falls on the people. But it also falls on me. Why? Because God said, if God said, my way is not your way, so the same applies to the leader. But we have to this is why we need the, 
the presence of the third member, which is the Holy Spirit, that will come in and help us. Believe me, the Holy Spirit has to help me. Because I got problems, just like everybody else got your own personal problem. I got the same problem too. But another problem I have, if any sheep that's under my leadership need my help, and we don't know half of the stuff that I go through, helping the members of this church, it's personal with me and them. But yet still, I got to take all my, the problems that, that I have just to survive in myself, live in myself. I have to deal with all that too, and I have to deal with every one of God's children that he entrusts under my leadership. If they call me and need me, I got to go. The one called me at 2 o'clock in the morning when I was ordained. This guy that ordained me, he said, if you get a call, this is what he said. He said, if you get a call from one of the sisters of this church at 2 o'clock in the morning, he said, you get up out of your bed and you go answer that call. Now, he said, now, whatever they call you and tell the problem here, you make sure that that's the problem you're going down there for. And my wife was ordained the same time that I was ordained. He said, now, if she didn't ask for you, that don't mean that you has to go. If she says she wants an ordained deacon, that's my responsibility. Now, if you want to take your wife, that's one thing. But he said, if they didn't call for the wife, she go ahead on and get her sleep. But like he told me, you know why you're going down there. You make sure when you leave, that's the reason you went. Now, you y'all can read between the lines. Somebody calling you at 2 o'clock in the morning telling you to come. And we have got a call. I mean, my wife got a call one morning at 2 o'clock in the morning. Had to go and do a Lord's Supper for Brother Smith and his wife. Because he said she thought she was going to pass and she wanted the Lord's Supper. He said, man, I hate to call you this late at night. But this is what she wants. And he said, and I told her, can't you wait until the morning? She said, I want it tonight. And we got up. And I told him, he said, I'm calling you because my wife said, you did the right thing. That's my job as an under-shepherd of Jesus Christ. But Jesus said, foxes have holes. The birds of the air have nests. But the son of man don't have nowhere to lay his head because he's all the way about his father's business. So this journey that we're on, my brothers and my sisters, it's a tedious journey, but it's a good journey. And when we get the doctrine inside of us and we run into complications, that's when the third member come in and help us. But if you're not down here to get no doctrine in you, then the third member has nothing to work with. And these are some good lessons. Because when the people act up, what are we going to do when we see the people acting up? We're going to go around and join up with everybody talking about how they're acting up, or are we going to pray for the people? Because we can get caught up in the gospel of our own self. Verse 6, and Joshua the son of Nun, and Caleb the son of uh, Hunid, which were of them that searched the land, rent their clothes. Notice, when these two men of God, the one brought back the good report, when they witnessed these people acting like this, this is what they did. They rent their clothes. So that shows that, that, that we can thank God for them, you know, because it's the fact that they had a better understanding of what God was doing than all of the rest of these people. And they are the ones that brought uh, this report back. And we know that renting of the clothes is a, a sign of uh, being disgusted, you know, with what they are visibly seeing how God's people are acting. And, and not only that, they come to the aid of Moses and Aaron. And I'm going to tell you something else now. Let, let's go. And they spoke unto all the company of the children of Israel, these two did. 
Now remember last week, uh, uh, you talked about that Sunday in your Sunday school. How Caleb told him, y'all calm down. That was in last week's lesson. Mm -hmm. Caleb said, y'all calm down. That was, yeah, last week's lesson, one of the scriptures, uh, verse 30, and Caleb said, St he still the people. He got their attention, try to calm them down, try to talk to them, you know. So, uh, and, and told them that, that let us go up at once and possess the land. And he also told them that we are well able to take those people. So, so we seeing uh, him joining in with Joshua now to try to help Moses and Aaron dealing with this situation. Then they spake unto all the company of, of the children of Israel, saying, The land which we pass through to search it, it is exceedingly good news. <coughs> In other words, for them to tell them, they reminded them of, what did they remind them of when they made this restatement? Oh, thus said the law. This is what the Lord said about the land. You're forgetting about everything the Lord said about the land, and the only thing you're looking at is the negative stuff. And if we're not careful, we'll focus more on the negative stuff than we will on what does say the Lord. Now, I'm telling you, we could, we could have the time of our life here at this church. It, it could start with the devotion service. We could have a devotion service where they can get this prayer, and the church is on fire. Mm -hmm. and, and the choir come right behind them, and they just sing, we all up out of our seat. And the preacher come back and preach a sound. We just hallelujah having a great time. And then two people jump up and start fighting in the church. What are people going to talk about? They're going to talk about the fight. All of the rest of the good time we had. <coughs> All they're going to focus on is the, And not only that, they're going to tell everybody <laughs> about the fight. They ain't going to go back on their job. They ain't going to go back in their neighborhood telling people about the good time that we had. Man, just being weak. They after the food on at the church, two people jumped up fight. Take the bad report and run with it. And these two here reminded them of the good report of what thus said the Lord. Should have alarm went up in their head? And that's what he said. We passed through to search it, we did. And it is exceedingly good land. That's just good. Yeah. It's a land that God, the land is flowing with milk and honey. And he told you about the, the trees. And here we come with this big cluster of grapes. Everything God said has been thrown out the window. And the only thing they can focus on is what the bad ten said and not a congregation coming up against these two men. And if the Lord delight in us, this is the these two speaking here, then we will bring, he will bring us into this land and give it <coughs> up. And the land will flow with milk and honey, these two verses reminding them. This is, now they were, what kind of land were they going to? The promised land. And this is what God had promised them. This is, a, this is why I call the promised land. This is what God promised them. Exceedingly good, rich land. A land flowed with milk and honey. How's that you didn't build trees? And if they saw all of these, whatever they saw over there, it was down to go over there and possess it. According to what thus said the Lord. And this is what, it's the promised land. Now let me ask you something. What, what, what did God promise us? Eternal life. Eternal life. Eternal life. Mm -hmm. And not only that, he promised us a city of no more. Mm -hmm. If we put up with what we got to put up down here, and let me tell you something, I don't care how strong you are, you're going to have to put up some, every night and something will make some tears come out of your eyes. But when you finally get home, I'm going to take your tear glands out because there won't be no more tears. Two people married and one little, they love one, that hurts. But when you get home, no more dying. No more crying. No more pain. No more suffering. Mm -hmm. 
But he didn't say that while we were down here. You're going to suffer down here. Nobody wants to suffer. And that's amazing. If you want to play professional football, anybody see what they, how they hit that quarterback from Kansas City the, last week? You see that album? That big old knee hit that boy in his head. And guess what he wanted to do after he come out of that tent? He wanted to come back out there and get on the field. And they told him, no. We got to. But let us, something happen to us. I, I remember Emmett Smith got his shoulder dislocated. Wasn't it? You remember that? Yeah. What did he do? <laughs> pain and suffering. People pain and suffering for what they want, but when it comes to God's work, they quit. They quit. And nobody suffered that like crap. God got on me one time so bad at me. You, you, have you been on Calvary? You got anything around your head? Your back been whipped wide open? You got any nail prints to show? Well, just shut up and do what I tell you. I'm telling you, God got on me. And he need to get on us sometime. Because if we want to be more like Christ, then what about the Paul? Paul suffered. He went through stuff. So if we're going to be who God tell us to be, we're going to have to go through something. I'm hoping that we can see what's going on in these lessons. And if we put up with it, then the Lord would delight in us. And he would bring us into the, our promised land if he delight in us. Now, what can take God delight away from us? Mumbering, crying, complaining, and disrespecting the one that he placed in leadership? This is what's going on in this lesson. Verse 9. Only rebel not against the Lord, neither fear ye the people of the land, for they are bread for us. Their defense is departed from them, and the Lord is with the fear of them not. Now he's telling them, these two boys is telling them, you are not rebelling against Moses and Aaron. That is right there in the verse. You are rebelling against the Lord. And for these people over there that you fear, fear ye the people of the land, for they are bread unto us. What do you do with bread? You consume it. You eat it up. He's telling them, we can consume them people. We can eat them people up. Yeah. And did they have any proof that they could eat the people up? Pharaoh's mighty army. Or in that other king, when they crossed over, they ate them up. They defeated them. And the Lord is with us. Fear them not. These two boys did not forget. Now something has happened that we haven't been talking about, and I wanted to bring that attention to our attention. Somebody go to Exodus, and it's gonna be a little reading here because we need to hear this. 14, 19 through 31, we haven't talked about this when we talk about all that the Lord did for them, and they are sitting up here worrying about uh, uh, some people on the other side that could defeat them. Notice what he said here, their defense, is departed from them. Now let's find another. This scripture here is telling about how God defended them. 14, 19 through 31. You know what the angel he's talking about, right? That cloud. And the pillar of the cloud went from before their face and stood behind them. And it came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel. And it was a cloud and darkness to them. But it gave light by night deep. So that the one came not near the other all the night. 
And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night, made the sea dry land, and the waters were divided. And the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea upon the dry ground, and the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left. And the Egyptians pursued and went in after them to the midst of the sea, even all Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horses. And it came to pass, and in the morning watch, the Lord looked unto the host of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire. Through the pillar and of the cloud and troubled the host of the Egyptians and took off their chariot wheels that they dragged their heaven <laughs> so that the Egyptians said let us free from the face of Israel for the Lord fighteth for them against the Egyptians the Lord did what? fight the Lord fighteth for them against he the took their defense and the Lord said unto Moses Stretch out thine hand over the sea, that the waters may come again upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots, upon their horses, and upon their horses. And Moses stretched forth his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to his strength when the morning appeared, and the Egyptians fled against him. Mm. And the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea. In the midst of the sea. And the waters returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen and all the hosts of the Pharaoh that came into the sea after them, there remained not so much as one of them. And the children of Israel walked upon dry land in the midst of the sea, and the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day out saved of the hand of the Egyptians. Out of the hand of the Israel Egyptians. saw the Egyptians dead upon the sea. And Israel saw that great work. Lord saw the, the Egyptians and the people feared the Lord and believed the Lord and his servant. What happened to that belief? Mm -hmm. Did you notice how he started that out? Mm -hmm. You got over two, a million people that traveling on feet, foot. And Pharaoh had the fastest horses mm -hmm. and the best bill chariot. And his men had the best weapon that you could have. Mm -hmm. So when they left Egypt and made that turn, going toward the Red Sea, two million people marching, it doesn't take long to run them down and hatch chariots and horses. Yes. Mm -hmm. And when they got close enough mm -hmm. to them, yeah. God who was up there in the daytime by clock, moved from up there, went behind them, got between them and Pharaoh's army that they couldn't get to, to them, their wife, and their children. And not only did he get that, if you read that right, he said he made it dark where they were and light where the nation of Israel was. Mm -hmm. And the army could not come near to the people. They witness all of this. And, and not only that, when you get into verse 24 and 5, when Pharaoh, God took the cloud down, right? He moved the cloud. Because he stayed there long enough for, his, for the Israelites to start crossing the Red Sea on dry land. Before they got all the way over on the other side. Now keep in mind, this is a two million people. But then God moved the cloud. And once God moved the cloud, here they come back in their chariot, in their fine horses, and entered in behind them in the Red Sea. But God made another act. When they started getting too close to them, God removed the wheels off the chariots. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Nobody just read all that stuff. And they could not, and, he, and, and another thing about him moving the wheels off the chariot, once he moved those wheels off the chariot, they saw the people going on and they couldn't go nowhere. Then they wanted to turn and go back. Too late now. Too late now. 
And God said in that scripture that their defense is departed from them. God stood between them and Pharaoh's mighty army. And if God did that back then, will he not do the same thing for them? If anybody on the other side? What is wrong with these people? And not only did these people witness this with their own eyes. That was part of this. Rahab wasn't there, but she believed. And here they were there in disbelief. Why these two men fell down on their faces? They couldn't believe how these people are. They didn't say they prayed. I hope they may have prayed. Because next week, listen, I don't want to go over there. Moses is going to pray next week. But they, they was in disbelief. You talking about you're going to overthrow who God placed over these people? And let me tell you something. They was an angry mob. And if they were to start killing, Lord have mercy. They were going to kill. Well, let's go to the next verse. It's right here in here. But all the congregation bathed, and that meant took. All the congregation, I'm going to use the word took stones with. Took stones. All the people took stones with. Stone them with stones. And the glory of the Lord appeared in the tabernacle of the congregation before all the children of Israel. Now it does not say that he came down in the cloud, but I believe he, that cloud come down. And when these people saw this. Yeah. Yeah. Did they actually the glory No, they didn't get the stone about because this is what this temper. God stopped what they were getting ready to do. Because the glory appeared. Yeah. All of appeared. That brightness stopped. Mm -hmm. All of bathed means all the congregation said, stone them with stones. That's what this verse is saying. Yeah. And this is what they was getting ready to do. All of them. And let me tell you something. Now, they were going to, it was four people that were going to be stoned. And it's amazing how they bought into this. You know what my mind went back to? Yes. That Friday when Jesus triumphant entry into Jerusalem. People was praising him. Yeah. Taking branches laying them down, taking their coats, laying them down for the king. Somebody excited that crowd when they saw Jesus with his back open, when they saw Jesus the way they had dressed him. Somebody excited these people to turn against Jesus. And here come the governor, Pilate, telling these people, I find no fault in this man. But by this time, they are a mob. Look how God's people can so easily turn against God's will for them. The scripture said the, the, the priest did. Yeah, the, the high priest not only. Yeah, they did. Yeah. And, and not on, out of all of the good deeds that Jesus had done, all of the miracles that Jesus had performed, just like, just like these people. Now, this is New Testament, what I'm talking about with Jesus. All the things he'd done, all that been thrown out the window. And what did they say? Crucify him. And when Pilate thought I got the answer to this, I'm going to bring out a known thief. One that have went up against the Roman government. I'm going to bring him out. Pilate said, I got the answer for this. Let me go get, what's the name, Barabbas? Yes, 
And I'm going to give them a choice between Barabbas and the one that had fed 5,000. The one that had bent over, straightened up. The one that stopped the funeral and raised a, bring a child back to life. The one that went to Lazarus' grave and called his name. Lazarus comes up and here he comes like a natural man. And they see, they knew about all of this and they said, crucify Jesus and let Barabbas go and the blood would be what? On our children. My brother, my sister, this is God's people. And here they, they acted up here when Jesus came, they acted up again. This is some serious stuff. We might not be doing it on a scale like they were doing, but if you're going to do it, God don't look at stuff like we look at it. You mumbling, you grumbling, you going up against the leader that he had placed there. Those things do not sit well with the Lord. And if the Lord does not delight in us, we're going to be just like this. We will not make it to the promised land. Thank God for that, for God appearing in his glory. And, and the Lord said unto Moses, look, who he, did the Lord say unto all of these people? Still talking to his leader. How long was this people, he's not even calling them my people no more. How long was this people provoke? Not Aaron, not Moses, not Caleb, not Joshua, me. And if we find ourselves doing this same thing, we're provoking God. And how long will it be ere they believe me for all the signs which have showed amongst them Thank you, Sister Porter. I left that out. What was it? I left the out. For all the signs which I have showed amongst them. We just talked about that one. But God is telling them all the signs. That's what God is saying. And these, God was doing these things that they might know who he is. Nobody could do these things. And that went all the way back. The sign, that God said all the signs. Go all the way back to Egypt. Dealing with the ten plagues, especially that last one, the devil angel. Killed the firstborn, a man and cattle. All of the signs, the crossing of the Red Sea on dry land. All of the signs, Pharaoh's army drowning in the Red Sea. All his sign, the desert place into a an oasis. And if anybody ever want to find out where that's fine, that's in Exodus 15 and 27. Where he took had ended up with 12 wells and 70 palm trees. All of the sign, they said that they want water, and you get water out of a dry rock. All of the sign they crying about meat. First of all, the first thing they were crying about bread. Rain down manna from heaven. Mm -hmm. Then when they're crying about meat, God sent quails in the camp. And one thing I didn't, uh, 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 have anybody ever been to a restaurant where they serve quail? Mm -hmm. Expensive. Do you find a lot of people buying that quail? It's Why? It's expensive. It's expensive. Mm -hmm. God, didn't, God did not cheat with us. Mm -hmm. And he can't keep it. That meat is expensive. And another sign that they failed to see was the pillar, the cloud by day and the fire by night. Mm -hmm. God was always right there with these people. And that's what God is saying to them. All, for all of the signs which I have showed amongst them. I will smite them 
with the presence. Y'all know what presence are, right? Mm -hmm. You know that falls under this coronavirus, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. That's what this is. Yeah, yeah, that's what the coronavirus yeah. is. Yeah. And that's what God said. I will smite them with presence and disinherit them. Lord mm -hmm. have mercy. And will make of thee a great nation and mightier than they. Now, God is running a quick test on Moses even in the midst of all of this. And where is the test? God said that I will make thee. Now, who get credit for this great nation that they are? Huh? Yeah, but he also given credit. No. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But he said here now, Moses, I'll kill them all. And I'll make a great nation out of thee. And that's why I'm going to tell you, I'm going to have, you going to have to allow me to go over to next week's lesson. Uh, and he said they will be mightier than they. Now, next week's lesson, Moses did pray for them. Now, if you're going to be called a preach, because when we get on that next, next lesson, Moses asked the Lord, what will the rest of the nation think about him if he kill all of these people like he's talking about doing? Do you think God needs somebody like Moses to straighten them out that he don't kill these people? You know what God was doing? If you're going to preach, if you're going to lead God's people, as long as you are willing to put up with whatever you have to put up to lead them, I hear your prayer to have mercy on me. And that goes into next week's lesson because Moses prayed for them. And God hear his prayer, but that was another test on Moses. And that's a goal for anyone in leadership position. And especially if you're going to be a preacher and you're going to call yourself leading God's people. And that's why he told uh, 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 the Apostle Paul, I'm going to show you children the thing you must suffer. The young people think they want to uh, be a preacher and lead God's people. They don't know what they're getting into. Thank you. Go ahead, David. That's David. great. That's huh? what you're saying. That's, that's a great point. Yeah. But not just for preachers, just for children of God. I see a man eating out of trash can mm -hmm. right here at that car. Okay. And I had two I had two sausage biscuits. And I can hear clear that. You know what I mean? And I mean he was, I had toilet bag, he was in the trash can. Mm. I was looking at that, I said, Lord, I thank you. And I heard it clear as day, Pastor, get in there when he saw the picture. You know what I mean. Give uh -huh. it to him. Because uh -huh. he tried to talk to me before I went around. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. He was standing on the corner where you are there. And I wouldn't respond. By the time I got it, he came back around. Lord, just what you're saying right now. Yeah. We have to be like that. Exactly. We have to be concerned. Be concerned. Yeah. Yeah. Because I noticed I was getting, I think I was talking to you. I noticed I was getting a little, little hard, yeah. harsh. Yeah. 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 Because another man had walked up to me. I said, man, don't walk up on me. I didn't give a kind word. You know what I mean? I didn't give him a kind I noticed that little hardness. I said, Lord, I'm sorry. Yeah. Because you ain't put me, you ain't blessed me, you ain't put me in this position to act like that. That's probably the kind word that you need. Oh Lord. Mm -hmm. you know? Lord. So not just the preacher, I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so, children yeah. of God should. That's right. We should respond in a certain way. You're right. That's a good point. I'm glad you brought that I'm up. I'm telling you, Pastor, yeah. I noticed myself going yeah. in that direction. Yeah. Yep. I said, that's how, 
When you did it to the least of them, my brother? When did you feed me? The dirty white guy. Mm -hmm. Which it shouldn't matter. No, it shouldn't matter. It shouldn't matter, no. but I'm just saying. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you brought that point up. No, we got to watch out we have. Yeah. And that's what these lessons are for. They're designed for all of us. Uh, I heard you. I hear you. Yeah. I on that. Yeah. Yeah. But, but like I was saying, Moses, in our next lesson, uh, for, for God to ask, God don't need nobody to tell him. Now, he knew what kind of heart Moses had. Yes, sir. And that's what I'm going to say about we that are preachers also. Yes, sir. Uh, because sometimes, man, it, it gets so, so heavy until that worldly mess pop right back up into you. <coughs> yes. But you got to put that worldly mess back in its proper places if you're going to lead other people. But like, like Deacon Newman said, it's not only for me. Uh, because that's what I read to you over there in the book of Acts. And it said, it, it's for all disciples. These yeah. are students. These are learners. That's what we are. You know, uh, man, uh, I've been giving a lot of money out of my pocket lately because I don't normally turn people down. <coughs> uh, and uh, I was at a gas station. Lady come up and asked me for some money. I went in my pocket and I had some bills in my pocket and, and I gave her some money and she went in the store. But once I gave her that money and I put some bills back in my pocket, something got on me. She went into the, the store, right? And I'm still there looking at her while I'm coming in. And she came back out the store and she looked like she was disappointed. And I put bills back in my pocket. I said, ma'am, would you come over here? And I gave her that. And whatever it was in that store, she didn't have enough money to pay for what it was. Mm -hmm. what I can tell you. Because when I gave her the rest of the money, she lit up. And she went right back into the store. Now, I wasn't there to see her, what she come out with. But one thing I know is the money that I gave her was not enough to whatever she needed out of that store. And, and not only that, you can tell when people are in need yeah. by their appearance. Mm -hmm. Her hair, her clothes, they were filthy. She was in need. And I took half of what I had and gave it to her. And when I put it back in my pocket, that's that Holy Spirit in them telling yes, mm -hmm. It let me know that you should have done better than that. And I was still pumping gas when she came back out that store. I begged for her to come. And when I gave her that money, her face lit up, and she went right back into the store. So whatever it was. That's, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah. And I said something else to it, too. Okay. Man, I hope you get that one. Yeah. You kind of had sores on the thing. Yeah. And that seemed like it was more, meant more to it than. It does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I, I, when I give them money, if I get the opportunity, I will minister to them. And I would ask them if they know the Lord. You know, and if you have a, if you don't have a church, you need to get a church. You know, I've never been cursed out by making See. that remark. Now we we've had a great lesson. Yes. Now I, I'm staying out of next week's lesson, but it's something that I want us to. It's not in our lesson, but I want to close with these scriptures. Someone find number fourteen. 26 through 31 because when you act like this, the way these people been acting, you gonna you it's a it's gonna cost you something. Just read that. 14, 26 through 31. Okay. Number 14, 26 through 31. These people, just dealing with these people. You don't, you don't get away with, 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 with this type of action with God. Numbers 14, 26 through 31. What's with the hanging? Numbers 14, verse 26. And the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, <coughs> saying, How long shall I bear with this evil congregation? which murmur against me. Amen. Him. I have heard the murmurings of the children of Israel, 
which they murmur against me. Say unto them, As truly as I live, said the Lord, as ye have spoken in my ears, so will I do to you. Wait a minute. Did y'all hear that? Yes. As you have spoken into my ear, all this stuff about I'm going to die here, go ahead. So will I do to you. Your carcasses shall fall in this wilderness, and all that were numbered of you, according to your whole number, from 20 years old and upward, which have murmured against me, Mama. doubtless ye shall not come into the land concerning which I swear to make you dwell therein, save Caleb, the son of Jephthah, and Joshua, the son of Nun. But your little ones, which he said should be a prey, then <coughs> will I bring in, and they shall know the land which ye have despised. Man, you hear that? Mm -hmm. God is on top of that. Anyone over 20 years old, your cock. And they had kept on saying, did the Lord bring us out here to die in the wilderness? Mm -hmm. They chose their own death sentence. By that complaining, by that crying all the time. Asking the Lord, did you bring us out here? To no, he brought you to cross you over into the promised land. And this is going back to where, uh, when he was telling Moses, I, I make you know you're 20 years old. I mean, 20 years and younger going to cross over. But my thing that I want you all to get, you will not, you're going to have to pay for this kind of action. And God tell I hear you all. I hear what y'all even saying about the little one. But since the little one is too young to complain, I'll take them and cross them over. Into the problem. But you old heads, that's out here doing all this crying, all this complaining, and going to make you a king, a captain, you rejected me. And I hear, God said, I hear all of this. Everything, it doesn't necessarily even have to come out of our mouth. So he know our thoughts are far. So they did not get to go to the promised land. Now, let's find out about the 10 spies. Somebody find Numbers 14, 36, and 38. And the men which Moses sent to search the land, who returned and made all the congregation to murmur against him by bringing up a standard upon the land. Even those men that did bring up the evil report upon the land died by the plague before the Lord. But Joshua the son of Nun and Caleb the son of Jephunneh which were of the men that went to search the land, live still. Those 10 men, they come back with that evil, it was an evil report is what God said it was. God hear, God knows everything. All the little murmuring, he knows all about the doubting, and he knows about the lying, and he knows about the exaggerating, because they blew those giants up over there in the land. Which struck fear in these people's hearts. There was nobody over there that they looked like grasshoppers compared to these people. And the bottom line, the reason I brought you those last, last set of scriptures, because God would not tolerate that among his people. And if it happened, it's just like he was saying over here. If God cannot delight in us and in our service, these people did not make it to the promised land. And if we find ourselves doing this, we're not going to make it to our promised land. And that promised land is called hell. And these lessons are designed to help us decompress and get right. Let's get right. But we can go on. They didn't make it. Ten spies didn't make it. He put a plague on them. But the rest of them wandered in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. That coffers is what he said. The, the Anakites and the Shephard. Canaanites killed them, didn't they? Huh? 
I was reading one said the, the Malachites and the Canaanites. Okay, no, what happened was, but well, she just read. Now, after God had Moses to speak to them, telling them that, then they going to cross over. Yeah, they, they, now all of a sudden, they, they bad, they both. They're going to cross over. Told them not to go up. They went over on their own, and when they got over there on the, on the, the, the those people that she just told, them, kill them. And why would they kill them? Because God was not with them. Yeah, they, they, they're going to run over there if you, you, you read the rest of it. I, I didn't go that deep in it, but it's always good to... Yeah, but no, they, they were going to go on over there on their own. And when they went over there, they was down. They was at the borders. That the door. All they had to do was cross over. But after Moses told them this, and how they coffin was going to be out there in the wilderness, yeah, they, they all decided let's go over now. But it's too late. Because God got a limit on how much stuff he will tolerate. He is a, a merciful God. He's slow to anger, but man, this just kept happening over and over again. When these people are talking about going to kill somebody, <laughs> uh, going to stone somebody, and they're going to make them a captain and go back to Egypt. Now, when God talking about in here, when he said, do anybody know what it means? What's the meaning of them wanting to go back to Egypt? What, what the meaning of that? If you're going to use the church terminology. Going back out in the world. That's exactly what they did. Say, we're going to go back into the world. I don't know about your world experience. I don't want to go back into the world. I'm thankful that I'm on, on this side. Because we are in a war. And the battle has already been fought. Thank you, sir. And the victory is already out. If we just stay and do it God's way. These are some great lessons. And we're going to find out on this week's lesson, Moses. We're going to learn a lot from Moses. Out of all that Moses went through, just like he did with his sister and his brother, when they sit up there and thought they was equal to him, as soon as that leprosy got on him, on them, and Joshua asked him that he did not hesitate to go down in prayer. Now, can I boast about being like that? No. That Holy Spirit had to work with me. Because I, I'm still in the oven. You know what a kick, you don't take that kick out of the oven, do you? What? Yourself still in the oven. I'm not telling you. But these lessons is, is speeding up the process. You know, and if we're going to be with God, if we're going to be the church, if, if we, the people that God have, and I hope we're going to understand this, if we are the people that God have pulled out of this world, that's what the nation of Israel were, they would have been an example to the rest of the world. They was on a journey to the promised land. You know, and everything God said is over there waiting on them. Everything God tells us is waiting in heaven, it is up there. It's waiting on us. But we could forfeit everything if we let that devil come in and let us act like these people. So these lessons are good. That's why I told y'all last year that I had to leave Galveston. <laughs> And come back on these lessons. These lessons mean something to me. And another thing, like I was telling you all, when God hit the whole world with this coronavirus, now this is me, and he shut down everything, God is not shutting down everything for us to come back doing what we were doing before he shut it down. We better come back here with a kingdom building in our mind. We better come back in here and want to do what God's will is for these churches. And what God's will is for the church is to save souls. Amen. This is a soul-saving business. And if God have called us out of the world, it's because a net was thrown out there. And everything in the net, he dragged it in. 
And once he get it in, he want to clean it. How does he clean it? Do Bible study. And he's getting us ready to do the same thing those 12 men did. Evangelize the world. This world is in a terrible shape. I'm going to say this and I'm going to stop. I was sitting up here. I don't know that uh, Chris did and William uh, stand with us right now until they finished their home. And they were gone. One the one at home with William and I and Isaac. And Isaac was watching some cartoons. And all of a sudden, the cartoon went off. And William jumped up and got the remote and changed the channel on the television. I said, man, what was all that about? He said, the next set of cartoons that were going to come on, they are gay cartoons. Could you believe, Deacon Webster, we stand, we live it in a time like this? Well, little children, like my two and a half year old grandson, can sit up and watch gay cartoons. Yeah, they know that. And if he can watch gay cartoons when he get grown, this is normal. Mm -hmm. And when this stuff get normal in the world we live in, this world is in trouble. They got up. Excuse me. I know. But they got up. Comic book coming out about Superman. And Lois Lane had a son. And guess what he is? Get it. I, I can't believe it. They're coming out with this. Yeah, this is the world we're living in. And this is why it's important for us to be who God has called us to be. Right. Yes, yeah, so and we're living in some time that God needs us. And we need Him. And the world needs us to be that light that's going to shine in this dark world. I can believe that when He jumped and responded like that. This is going to end our teaching on the night. Let us bow our heads in a moment of prayer. Turn to God, our Father, Father, our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Father, we come once again to thank you. We thank you for these lessons. As our superintendent was saying in this prayer, Lord, I pray that these lessons, uh, that we will not just hear these lessons, that we will also realize the time that we are living in, how your world is going along with the ways of the world, just like your people believe in this wrong report, and out of all you've done to them, oh, Father, they just blotted it out and went along with the bad report. Oh, Lord, we know that there is a good report. And as your son came and went out on a hill called Calvary, and while we were yet sinners, he died that we all might have a right to the tree of life that one day we can make the promised land our home. And then help us to realize that you have a will. And your will is, your divine will is, that no man, woman, child, will be denied their home in heaven. That's your will, that every soul be saved. And Lord, I pray that you would help the Green Meadow Church family, along with all the other churches, to help us to be in the soul-saving business. Help us to be disciples. Help us to learn of your word. And then, Lord, help us to live your word out, even in our neighborhood, on our job, wherever we go. And then, Lord, teach us when we come in here on Sunday morning to come for none other reason but to praise your holy and your righteous name. Father, this coronavirus is still here. It's still taking our people. We come today praying for one of our own. Just shocked me just on yesterday. That Reverend Herman Jones has now contracted the coronavirus. We're praying for him. And even though he contracted, we know you are in the healing business. We are already claiming victory. Pray that you would. Heal him soon. It will not be a long, drawn-out process. Heal him, Lord. We can get back on the business of helping save his soul and preaching the uncompromised gospel. Watch over him, he and his wife, and their home. Protect them, Lord. And 
Again, Lord, again, we're praying for all our children, praying for this great nation, America. It is a great nation. She's on the wrong path. Oh, Lord, but we thank you that the, the church is still alive and doing your will. Because when the church give up, help us to be like Moses. In spite of what's going on, help us to stand in the gap. And then there's the major one that's standing in the gap, who is your beloved son, Jesus Christ. And he died that no man could be left out, shedding his precious blood, that we all might have a right to the tree of life and spend eternity with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in heaven. In Jesus' blessed name, this is our prayer. Amen, and we thank you.